I'm holding the program for last year's Global Leadership Summit. Uh, my guest is the man pictured on this page. Erwin um, McManus, activist, filmmaker, innovator and cultural architect, Mosaic, Los Angeles, California. Erwin, uh, does that even come close to the role of pastor by any chance? Well, if you ask my wife, she'd tell you I wasn't a very good pastor, so maybe that's a better description. We, you know, we always say that pastoring is too important for one person to do it. It's really important to have a community where everyone pastors one another. And I think my role is to create environments where people pastor each other, where people care for each other, people dream and grow and experience life change. Very interesting. You rocked my world, my theology, with your message at this event. Uh, I, I think if I, you know, prepared a message or had what I thought was a creative idea, there's always a little voice that comes behind and says, ah, there's nothing new under the sun. Somewhere, sometime, somebody else has thought this or put this together. Wrong. Uh, you, you know, I, I had those thoughts for um, a lot of years before I made them public. And I, I wasn't exaggerating at the summit when uh, I described the conversation that me and my wife Kim had. I mean, I remember in the living room just saying, I, I'm just done keeping it in. Solomon was wrong, and Kim's like, please don't tell anyone that. Please don't say that. Can you just keep it to yourself? And, and you know, she just uh, feels whatever pain comes my way more than I do. And she knew that if I came out publicly and, and stated this conclusion that it wouldn't go well for me. But I felt that people were trapped inside of a, a, of a mindset that said that there was nothing creative, nothing uh, new, nothing fresh that happens in human history and, and that somehow um, the creative process was in violation to the glory of God. And I thought, wait a minute, we don't believe Solomon all the way through the book of Ecclesiastes. We don't believe that dogs and, and humans go to the same place and that the same thing happens. We don't believe it all ends at the end of life. We, it's so many things that Solomon says we know are wrong. We don't think you just should eat and drink and be merry and then you die and it's over. Life is meaningless. Yeah, we, we don't believe his opening statement. I mean, why listen to a guy whose opening statement is meaningless, 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 everything is meaningless. <laughs> and, and I thought it, it says more about us that we reject everything else he said pretty much, but we accept it when he says there's nothing new under the sun. And I think it's because we've been taught this framework that the future is set, that it's um, already determined and predestined. And by the way, uh, if we are actually that fatalistic, it makes us no different than uh, Muslims. It makes us no different than Buddhists. And actually, it makes us no different than scientific atheists who um, see us as a part of an evolutionary process. And we're just, um, in a sense, destined as much it's all as an ant. Yeah. And I, I think what the scriptures do is they give us this beautiful freedom that we are created by the creator of the universe. We've been given this beautiful gift called imagination. And we can imagine a future that doesn't exist and then we're gifted with the ability to create it. You say the church should be the epicenter of creativity. Yeah, and, and maybe I, I, um, I don't give the church enough credit because I think the church has been the epicenter of human creativity. It, we just sort of lost our way. Now, and when, when you look back in different periods in history, when you think of the work of Michelangelo and Raphael, when you, uh, when, when you think even the emergence of the, the scientific revolution and uh, the, um, the birth of the Enlightenment, I mean, some of the most significant and dramatic moments of human creativity, of imagination and innovation came out of the environment of the church. Mm -hmm. and, and I think many times we forget that. I mean, the greatest architecture in the world comes out of uh, a need to express the sacred and create a place where man and God uh, can um, inhabit the same space. And, and I, I think throughout history, the church has been the epicenter of human creativity. But frankly, uh, I, I would say almost since the time of John Stuart Mills and this um, uh, embracing of a utilitarian worldview, uh, creativity and spirituality have become enemies and the church lost its place as an, uh, an epic um, force for human creativity. You make a simple statement, and I'm not sure which book it is. Maybe it was in your message here. You said, we used to be great poets. And you know, recently someone gave me a BBC recording of Lakeland poets, Lake District poets, like mm. William Wordsworth, Samuel Taylor Coleridge. And I'm listening to this being read with a beautiful radio voice. And they're so transcendent. So much of the eternal is reflected in their writing. And I thought, oh, you're right. And you started as a poet. 
I did. I, I, I started as a very bad musician and, uh, and, and a poet sort of ahead of its time. And uh, part of the reason I say that is when I was doing poetry and then involved in creating some pieces, my wife would always say to me, why are you doing poetry? It's not very manly. <laughs> and uh, now she loves spoken word and poetry, and she's oh, oh, look at that poet, he's so brilliant, and, and look at that poet, uh, it's so profound that I keep saying to her, wait a minute, how come 25 years ago when I was doing poetry, it was a challenge to my masculinity, and now it's a reflection of human genius and artistry. I guess sometimes you, you, you can't really afford to be a little too early. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has to be cultivated. When we started does. going so fast that we've left some good things mm -hmm. behind. Uh, interesting that Mosaic's fifth core value says creativity is the natural result of spirituality. Yeah, well, How do you live this out in Mosaic? How is this enforced? Well, you know, when we were putting together our encouraged. core values and we came down to, to the five, I had really no conflict with the first four. It was the fifth one where everyone disagreed with me. And you know, we were obviously coming to core values from a, a place of commonality. It was, it was an expression of the values we really held. But this fifth one was the one I fought for. And I even called some of you know, my, my leading thinkers around the country to find someone who would agree with me so that I could create an argument. And I just didn't have anyone who sided with me at that time. And um, I, I, this was the place where I just thought, I'm going to draw a line in the sand, and this is where I'm going to stand. Um, because I, I felt like for so long in the last 150, 200 years, creativity and spirituality had been at war with each other. And what we wanted to say is, look, the ultimate expression of character development is actually creativity. Because when you become the person God created you to be, that's when your God-given potential and talent and genius is unleashed to its ultimate level. Mm -hmm. And I think so oftentimes we've talked about character as if it's the things we don't do. So a person of character doesn't lie and doesn't steal and doesn't commit adultery and you know, doesn't do all these things. And so character has become about all the things you do not do. But you see, I, I, I think we really underestimate the power of the human spirit. I mean, how can character be a person who doesn't do anything wrong but he doesn't do anything right? To me, character is a person who lives their most courageous life. I mean, character is a person who risks to make the world more beautiful. Character is, is what drives a person to serve humanity and to promote the good and the beautiful and the true. You would say that our life should only be explainable because of God. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and so what we did at Mosaic, and at first uh, the, the conversation was really challenging because people thought I was saying everyone should be a painter. You know, oh. when I was saying creativity is the natural result of spirituality, or everyone should be a dancer, or everyone should be an actor. And of course, in L.A., where there are so many pan painters and, and actors and dancers, it sort of reinforced, uh, I think, the misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. And I was not saying everyone should be in, uh, in the arts. What I was saying is that life is a creative act, and that really your life is your greatest work of art. And so if you're a nurse, the, the way you serve for those, those people who are hurting and sick, that's, that, that can be a creative act. And, and so if you're going in and just checking all the monitors and you know, going through the motions, then really you're just a, a part of the machine. You're a cog in the machine. But if you're a nurse and you're going in and you're caring for the patient and your well-being actually adds to the well-being of that person who's struggling for their life and you're doing more than checking the monitors, you're, you're, you're tapping into the soul and, 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 and emotional and relational wholeness of that person, you're now making being a nurse uh, a, a, the work of an artisan. Hmm. And you know, there's, there's nothing more wonderful to me to watch than like a, a father who's an artisan in his parenting who's not just going through the motions of having a, a son or a daughter who's six or seven years old and you know, getting them to you know, stay in line and follow the rules, but when you see that dad who's investing in his kids and loving them and creating a space from the dream and to uh, be safe, to, uh, to risk, and uh, then to me, it's like, to me, parenting should be a work of art. And, and I, I really think every aspect of life, when we engage it with all of our passion, and, uh, and all of our creativity uh, becomes, for me, a work of art. 